right, hey everyone, I'm Mike from Prep Pros here. We're gonna do a little bit of a speed run here through the no calculator section. See if we can get through it in under 15 minutes while still giving you guys explanations for anything you got stuck on. If this helps you out, please like and subscribe as I'll start running through some of the other sections as well next week. All right, question one here. A certain university offers courses that are either three credits or four credits per course each semester. A student registered for a total of 16 credits for the fall semester. Which equation represents the possible numbers of three credit courses X, four credit courses Y that the student could have registered? Well, it's gonna have to add up to 16. Our three is gonna be with the X, our four is gonna be with the Y. B is our right answer there. Question two, the function F is divided by F of X equals X plus three. What is the Y intercept of that? Well, if we're looking for the Y intercept, we're simply plugging in zero for X. That means we're gonna get the point zero comma three. The SAT really loves to put out wrong versions of their question answer service. So it's gotta be D or A, but our correct answer is simply zero comma three. All right, question three here, let's zoom in a little bit. The graph shown models the re monthly revenue in millions of dollars for a particular marketing company from June 2009 through October 2010. According to the model, which of the following is closest to the company's monthly revenue for June 2009? Well, this is months after June 2009, so that means it's zero. We're gonna get the revenue for June 2009 looks like that's gotta be a little bit under 10 there, so A is gonna have to be our correct answer. All right, question four here. In the figure shown, right triangle ABC is similar to right triangle EDC, where ACB is congruent to ECD, and AE equals 15, so we know this whole thing is 15. Well, this three and six tells us that this CE element is gonna have to be twice the length of AC because six is twice the length of three. So what we can do here is we can simply write, well, x, and this is gonna be 2x. So what we know is x plus 2x is gonna to have to equal 15. 3x equals 15, x equals five. But since we're looking for the part, which is our 2x, our CE, we're simply doing two times five, which is gonna give us 10. All right, question five, which polynomial is equivalent to this? Well, 12x to the fourth plus six x to the fourth gives me 18x to the fourth, so goodbye A and B. We just have a 13x squared, so C is our right answer and we can move on. Question six, equation y equals x plus w over z relates the positive numbers w, x, y, and z. We're looking for x in terms of y, y, w, y, and z. So we're just isolating for x over here on the right hand side. So I'm gonna cross multiply by z. I will get y, z equals x plus w. Now I simply have to subtract over that w. So I will get yz minus w equals x. There we go, our correct answer of a. All right, seven here, an interpreting lines question. The given linear function g models the annual percent increase in the population of India x years after 1990. We're looking for g of 20 equals 13.76. Well, since x is years, we know we're gonna have to see 20 years, so knock out a and b. And now our output of this function is the percent increase so the percent increase was 1.376, the 1.376 times, that's not what our function is giving us. So C is our correct answer there. All right, question eight. For the quadratic function f shown, a, b, and c are constants. For the graph of y equals f of x in the xy plane, the quadratic function f opens upwards. So that means a is gonna have to be greater than zero. So we can get rid of a and b already and the coordinates of its vertex are both negative. Well, what this is, this is in our like factored form, which is gonna show us the x-intercept. So this is a little bit of a sneaky question here, but since our both coordinates of the vertex are gonna be negative, they're gonna to have to be in this third quadrant down here. Now, what we don't know is we could have a parabola that looks like that. We could also have a parabola that looks like this, but we're gonna to have to have at least one value, which is negative because your vertex is the midpoint of your intercepts, which are being displayed by B and C. So we know it has to, at least one has to be negative. So C, uh, so D is gonna be wrong because both of those are positive, which means our X value would have to be positive for this to possibly be true. So that's how we can tell that C is gonna be our correct answer. In this case, it would look like our black parabola. Both points are gonna be in that negative portion of our X values. All right, question nine. How many solutions does the given system of equations have? All right, SAT loves these. So we'll get 2x plus 6y equals 20, and we'll get 4x 
plus 2y equals 20. Well, here what I can see is, I'm going to skip putting them in y equals mx plus b form because I trust you guys can all do that. But here what I'm going to see is these are going to have different slopes in different y-intercepts once I put them in y equals mx plus b form, which tells me that they're only going to possibly have one solution. So I can see that b is my right answer there. All right, on to 10. Some of the solutions of our absolute value. Well, you always want to get everything over to the right-hand side first. So we're going to subtract over our 4. And we'll get the absolute value of 2x plus 6 equals 4. Now, to get rid of these absolute value bars, we set equal to positive and negative. So we'll get 2x plus 6 equals 4. And we'll get 2x plus 6 equals negative 4. Well, this is going to give me that 2x equals negative 10 and x equals negative 5. This is going to give me 2x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 1. The sum of those two is going to be negative 6. All right, 11 here, shading question. So the shaded region shown represents the solutions to which inequality? Well, I know I'm going to have a line that has a positive slope of 3. It's going to have a y-intercept of 3. And it's going to have to be less than or equal to the y values because we're shading below. So what I can see here is both of these, when I subtract over my 3x, these are going to give me a slope of negative 3. So I can get rid of c and d. Now between a and b uh, should be b here, but I'm going to go through and make sure I'm not making a mistake. We'll get negative y is greater than or equal to negative 3x minus 3. Well, now we're going to have to divide by negative 1. When we do that, we're going to have to flip our inequality. So y is less than or equal to 3x plus 3. 3x plus 3 is our correct line, our slope of 3, our intercept of 3, and it's less than or equal to it. So that's why b is our right answer. Definitely a little bit of a tricky question, though. All right, question 12 here. The graph shown models the height y and feet of a volleyball x seconds after it was hit by a player. Which equation represents the relationship between the height of the volleyball and the time since it was hit? Well, most of these here looks like we've got, so our vertex here is going to be 0.25 and 6. So it looks like right off the bat, D is going to be our right answer here. But now the way you could really check this, especially if you're ever stuck on a question like this, you can always just plug in a point along the line. So we'll actually go through that together. So our Y value is 6. So we'll do 6 equals negative 16 times, well, we know our X value there is 0.25 minus 0.25 squared plus 6. Well, 0.25 minus 0.25 equals 0, 0 squared equals 0, negative 16 times 0 equals 0. So we're simply going to get 6 equals 0 plus 6. That is true. That gives me another way of telling D is my right answer. All right, question here. All right, so our trapezoid question. Trapezoid A and trapezoid B shown. Did I put these out of order somehow? Hmm, maybe it shows both of these in number 14. So I think this should be number 13 here. Uh, trapezoid A, this would be another error from the SAT if I took the wrong screenshot there, uh, unless I messed that up. Trapezoid A and trapezoid B are shown are similar. The length of each side of trapezoid A is eight times the length of the corresponding side of trapezoid B. So that means all the dimensions of this one have to be eight times as great. The area of trapezoid A is how many times as large as the area of trapezoid B? Well, since our trapezoid formula is 1 half B1 plus B2 times H, we could really think of that. That's just going to be our trapezoid B formula. But now what we're going to have here is each of the values here are going to be 8 times as great. Our B1 plus B2 is going to be basically 8 times as great as our original equation, and our height is also going to be 8 times as great. So what we can see is our 8 times 8 here is going to give us, it's going to be 64 times as large. This was a pretty similar question to what we saw in 19 on the no calculator in March. The other way you could always do this, you could just plug in some values. You can make this like 2, this could be 4, your height could be 1, and then you could basically multiply all those dimensions by 8. You could have like 16 and 32 and 8. And once you plug those values in, you're going to see the area is way bigger. So this is a little trick called substitution. Once you plug numbers in, it gets a lot clearer. All right, and this is either 14 or 13 since it looks like the SAT put the same numbers there. 
Um, the function f is defined by f of x equals negative 8 times 6 to the x minus 4. What is the y-intercept? Well, we've now seen two y-intercept questions. All you have to remember, plug 0 in for x to find your y-intercept. So this is going to be negative 8 times 6 to the 0 minus 4. Well, now anything to the 0 power equals 1. So we're going to get negative 8 times 1 minus 4. That's just going to give us negative 8 minus 4. So that's going to give us 0 comma negative 12. Really, really common question type on the SAT. All right, 15. Now this one I know they actually made an error on because I went through this problem earlier actually because I had a ton of students text me because they were like, Michael, this is literally impossible for me to do and I have a bunch of friends looking at it. This was definitely supposed to be square root of 2q plus square root of 2r all to the 2 thirds power. And if I somehow made a mistake, drop it in the comments and I'll take a look at it. But I'm quite confident because none of these answer choices will work given this. Now this is where it gets tricky. This is gonna be the same as Basically, what we could do is we could re-express this. It's the same as the square root of 2q plus, plus 2r all squared, all underneath, let me get rid of some of that there, all underneath the third root. Denominator is your root index, numerator is the power underneath it. So what this is also going to be the same is, this is going to be the same as the cube root of root 2q plus root, moving too quick here apparently, plus root 2r times root 2q plus root 2r. So now we're gonna have to go ahead and we're gonna have to do all of our foiling here. So what we're gonna get, I'm gonna do a little bit of this in my head just so I don't have too much writing down. So what we're gonna get is root 2q times root 2q is gonna give us 2q. Now we're gonna get root 2q times root 2r, which is gonna be the same as plus 2 root qr or rq, and we're gonna get the same thing once again is we multiply these terms. Sorry, is we multiply, before I confuse any of you guys. So we're gonna have to do our root 2r times our root 2q, and we're gonna have to do our root 2q times our root 2r. A lot of variables to talk through. So this is also gonna give us another 2 root qr, and then root 2r times root 2r is gonna give us 2r. And so once we add these together, this is how we're gonna get our answer here of D. Tricky question, they definitely made a mistake, similar to what we saw at the front where we had two of the same answer. Now 16, three X minus nine equals six. What is the value of two X? Well, that's gonna be three X equals 15, X equals five, two X means we're gonna get 10 there. 17, what is the positive solution? So we're just gonna go ahead and square everything here. So this is gonna give us x squared minus nine equals 16, x squared equals 25, plus or minus five, positive solution is gonna be five. All right, line P defined by two y plus four x equals nine, line R is perpendicular to that, so that means our slopes are negative reciprocals. So this one we wanna put in y equals mx plus b form, so we'll get two y equals negative four x plus nine. Now our slope is gonna be the same as negative two. We'll get nine over two, but this doesn't matter when we're looking for the relationship of perpendicular slopes. We're doing the negative reciprocal, so that's the same as flipping the sign, flipping the fraction. So negative two, the perpendicular slope is gonna be one half or 0.5. All right, 19. If two x over three minus two equals x over three plus one, what is the value of two x? Well, we can just add our two over and we're gonna subtract our x over three. Well, what that is gonna give us is x over three equals three. We can cross multiply to get rid of the fraction. That's gonna give us that x equals nine. Always watch out for this. Now we're looking for two x, which is gonna give us 18. This is the most painful mistake a lot of students make on the test because it means you knew what you were doing, but you just forgot to take the final step. All right, 20 here. SAT loves this is arc, arc and sector questions. So points A and B lie in a circle with a radius of four meters. And arc AB has a length of four pi over five meters. The length of arc AB is what fraction of the circumference? Well, our circumference is two pi r, so our circumference is going to be eight pi, and we're looking for what fraction four pi over five is over eight pi. Well, now what we can do to make our life easier is we can express these with the same denominator. Well, eight pi 
is simply going to be the same as 8 pi times 5 over 5, which is going to give us 40 pi over 5. Now we can cancel out the 5s. 4 pi over 40 pi is simply the same as 1 over 10 or 0 0.1. So I hope this was really helpful. Go ahead and like and subscribe if this really helped you guys out. Also in the link below, there is a free math course where I teach all of the teaching pages out of our math book. It's around like eight or 10 hours in lectures. It's totally free. It's incredibly helpful. It's the same lessons I teach all of my students. So you can check out the link below for that. Additionally, if you guys had any questions from this video, drop them below. But next week, I'm going to be going through the calculator section. And I'm also going to run through the writing and language section if this video gets enough likes.